Okay. Please welcome Tracy O'Keefe, author, clinical hypnotherapist, naturopath and counsellor. Her topic for today is longevity in business, how to stay in business for decades. Please welcome Tracy. Can you hear me now? Yes. Well, hi everyone. Isn't it wonderful to be here? First plant-based women conference organized by the beautiful Kathy Divine. Divine by name, divine by nature. The first thing I'd like to do is acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land because their history is one of oppression. And in coming here today, we're often talking about oppression of animals, but also the planet, etc. I, as a child, was brought up in poverty. So my first job at four years old was to follow my brothers around with a go-kart and sell firewood for, from door to door. So at four years old, I stood there in a a bonnet and a duffel coat and gloves and wellingtons and scarf in the snow with the dog. My brothers knocked on the door and then ran behind the tree. And of course, when the door opens, it's, would you like to buy some firewood, missus? <laughs> Who's going to refuse a dog and a four-year-old? <laughs> Make sure your elevator pitch is up to standard. When I was six and seven, I discovered I could make money in Auntie Betty's hairdressing salon. Because if I took cups of tea to the ladies underneath the old-fashioned hairdryer, they'd give me half a penny. A whole half a penny. If I did 12 cups, I would have sixpence the price of a ballet lesson. Wow! Of course, the ballet shoes in those days had leather. They had pig skin. Nobody, I'd never heard of the word vegan. That I don't think there was a vegan in the town that I came from. Certainly nobody ever heard of one. I discovered at 11 years old, I could take my brother's go-kart and go all the way down the big hill to the market garden place. And I could drag a sack of potatoes up to the market and sell them cheaper than the market traders. <laughs> know your competition. <laughs> when I was 15, I started my first official business. I was at college. Um, I had three part-time jobs in the projection box of an Indian cinema. I didn't know what was being said on the screen, only that I have to press the button when there are three dots coming up on the screen calling numbers in a bingo hall and hairdressers on a Saturday. Not enough money. I lived in a bed sit on my own, so I started a business going to people's houses doing their hair. Deliver what the customer wants, where they want it, when they want it. I then worked with someone to lose weight. I was trained in dance and ballet and acro as a child and a woman wanted to lose weight and she became the slimmer of the year in England at that time and we started three health clubs off the back of it. Get endorsements for your business, endorsements for your product. I didn't do terribly well being employed by other people. I remember I worked for a corporation once and after the first month, I'd sold more than everybody else. And there was all sorts of plots to sack me. And I thought, well, I'm not going to do well here. Over the years, I've owned many, many, many businesses. I owned a Rolls-Royce and Bentley dealership. And in those days, the Rolls-Royce came with leather seats and wool carpets. That was the best money could buy. Social influence social gestalts, what the masses think, what propaganda tells us. I had an organic, 
a hotel and restaurant, one of the first ones in England in the 1980s. And people thought I was crazy, but people queued up for it. Now, it wasn't vegan. It wasn't even vegetarian, because I didn't know what a vegan was at that time. My clinic in London became vegan in 96, when my wife came home and said, we're going vegan. <laughs> I said, what do you mean we're going vegan? <laughs> we're going vegan. I'm not going to get any cheese for you anymore. <laughs> okay. So this is the vegan cheese? God, it's like rubber. <laughs> and we went vegan. And my clinic went vegan. And of course, all my colleagues went, mm-hmm. Oh dear, just pacify her. Well, that was 22 years ago. And my clinics have been vegan ever since. And people thought I would go broke. But I made millions of dollars. Because you must believe in your product. You have to believe in your product. And when a patient comes in to me, it is absolutely clear. Whatever physical or mental problems they have, plant-based living is a better way for the body, mind, spirit, and soul to be settled. When I'm looking at blood underneath a microscope, first of all, I'm looking macro. I want to see how the blood cells interact with each other. Do the red blood cells bounce off each other so that they've got lots of surface area to imbibe lots of oxygen to carry it around the body? Or are they clustered together and clumped and suffocated? In business, you have to be able to see the big focus. And the big focus is, do you know the GDP? Do you know the cash rate? Do you know the employment rate? Do you know what politics influence your taxes? Because if you own a business, you should also be studying economics every day of your life. I also turn the microscope down much, much more so I can see almost within an individual cell, the outlines of an individual cell, whether it's corrupted or not, going down to a micro level. Do you monitor your supplies? Do you look at your bank account every day? Are you clear what profit you're going to make at the end of the year? For me, when I teach people about business, you need to make a profit in three months maximum. Maximum, preferably 28 days. Otherwise, it's an expensive hobby. It doesn't matter whether it's a vegan business or a not vegan business. It's an expensive hobby. So you need to bring your tuchus to it. And when I ran the ballet, I did rehearsals in the daytime, taught, fell asleep in the cafe, then did four shows at night and got three hours sleep and started again. Run a business because you love the business, not because it's a part-time job for yourself. Because no successful business person has ever had a part-time job for themselves in any way whatsoever. So be dedicated and love your business and drill down small, chunk, and also look at your business within the environment in which it's operating. Balance. There must be balance in your business. There must be balance in your life. The world's in a bit of a mess. The sea is full of plastic. Animals are dying left, right, and center unnecessarily. We're losing species by the day. Not by the year, but by the day. Our biodiversity is shrinking. And the beauty about planet Earth is we have 
had so much biodiversity and that has been part of evolution. Some of you may be vegan, some of you may be toying with it or thinking about it. But if you look at the facts and you look at the science and you go deep within your heart, if you're running your business less than vegan, maybe you're not living by true values and you need to run your business according to your values of being a humanitarian but also being a planetarian. Balancing yourself. You know, I don't do everything in my companies. I give stuff to staff and walk away and I go to the gym and I go to the dance studio and I'm there for anything from 8 to 12 hours a week and I have time where I'm thinking in my, I'm just thinking that's all I'm doing I'm just thinking so I come back and I'm re-energized and I go okay so we're going to do this 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 and I sack customers I sack clients and patients because if you come to me and you want to pretend to recover from your illness and you're not prepared to help yourself you're wasting your money and you're wasting my time balance is about connection too this is the first of a particular event it has a energy, a good energy. But it means nothing unless you take that good energy away. To restore balance in your own life, in your own psyche, in your own heart, and in your own community. When you make money in your business, give it away. Give away your time. Give away your money because if it's just for you what's the point <laughs> for 47 years I've been involved in social welfare movements and given a lot of money away because I can and you're only successful in your vegan business when you're giving money away and when you're giving your time and your energy away to promote what you believe in and what you know will help people. I'm wearing my watch. I got a watch. The watch is the vegan watch. It's fabulous. I don't need a leather strap anymore. These aren't suede. These aren't leather anymore. They're made in Russia. I have to wait three months for each pair to be delivered. There is no excuse anymore for animal products. We're not going to die from depletion of nutrition. In all the years and the thousands of patients I've seen, I've never seen anyone with a protein deficiency. <laughs> never. And I don't think GPs have as well because protein deficiency is called kwashiko and it is only seen in countries where there is starvation. And I don't see any starving people here. Be in love with your vegan business. I say to the people around me that my vegan business is a member of my family. And you respect that as much as any other member of the family. Because it's life, it's energy. And what do you leave behind on the gravestone? Does anybody know what is the most common writing on a gravestone? Can anybody guess? In loving memory. In loving memory for people, for animals, for planet. 
yes, we're all consumers. Minimize your impact as you walk upon the earth. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tracy. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> um, do you see um, a, a positive impact in um, advertising your business as a vegan business? I was talking with people before, and some restaurants, for example, are not advertising any longer they are vegan, although they are. But um, it, it could be a downside, but it could be a positive side. What, what it's a, an interesting question, and of course it depends on the kind of business you are. I'm a health professional, so I don't want to scare people. There's a whole swathe of farmers' wives in the southern shires that have gone vegan after coming to see me. <laughs> but they never imagined that they would do that in coming to cure their ills. Um, some restaurants advertise as vegan and they get a lot of customers from that. It depends on your industry and your clientele. And Katrina did a very good article on that in Forbes. Uh, and that's a very interesting thing to look at. But it depends on your business, your place in the marketplace, and how much established clientele you've got and who your clientele are. Who are you aiming at? Does that answer? Thank you so much. Is there something I wish someone had told me? Well, one of the things about balance is I've always had amazing mentors. Since I was very young, I always found mentors. One of my mentors was Jack Cohen, who started Tesco's in the UK, which is equivalent to Coles here. And Jack only ever talked to me about the sea coming in, the sea coming out, the, the goals going in, the goals, the boats coming in, but, and I didn't realize he was teaching me business until afterwards. <laughs> so, yeah, get more mentors. And at the moment, I have two supervisors on the coach. I think I'm more busy doing that than I am doing patients at times. But yes, mentorship. Thank you. We have, we have time for one more question. Yep. Yeah? Okay. I'm running. I'm running. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tracy. I love your story, which I, of course, know. Um, you've shared it many times with us, myself. Is um, You started right, that mindset that happened in your teenage years. Um, that the book, the, um, the New Billionaires or something, all talked about people even flunking out of school because they had this way of doing it. Can you tell us something about the mindset required to stay the course as you have done for four decades? Well, I never got to go to school. 11 and uh, 15 years old. So I had to fight to get into college by taking an exam. And I was told that I probably wasn't the right person to go to college. I didn't come from a good background, a good family, or, or they didn't have any money. And basically, I thought, well, bugger you. <laughs> um, and when you have nothing, you've got nothing to lose. Uh, and when you have something, then you defend that something. But the one thing that you find out over 60 is that you could have done anything. And of course, people tell you that when you're 20 or 30 years old, but you don't really believe them. But when you're over 60, you think, I could have been a neurosurgeon, but the varicose veins, I wouldn't want that. So yes, believe you can do anything. Dream and make it happen. <laughs>